This is me, walking down the bustling streets of Yawa Rat Road. But why am I here? To tell a story of the hidden and dark past of the world's largest Chinatown. A story that would involve mysterious secret societies, opium dens, Chinese triads, and their final coalition with Thai royalty to become some of the most powerful and influential people in modern day Thailand. But how did they do this? And how did Chinatown even begin? Well, in this video, you're gonna find out. So join me as we delve into the deep and dark history of the world's largest Chinatown. Let's go. All right, so the journey begins. The journey begins with trying to cross probably one of the busiest roads in the world. First, we're gonna get some breakfast and something to drink because I'm starving. Oh, I don't know. I'll bite in con con chi. Dog. Dog? Dog. They were Yawara Road. Mwangi. They might be. 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 Well, what a nice little welcome to Yawarat Road. What used to be one of the most dangerous places in all of Thailand. This whole area used to be a slum, and now it's a huge tourist attraction. I mean, just 200 years ago, maybe 100 years ago, I probably wouldn't have been able to walk around with my camera because cameras weren't invented. But also because they might have been stolen. So let's see if that happens today. I very much doubt it. Thailand is one of the safest places ever. It's sweet. It's kind of like if you're deep fried pasta and donuts. Interesting. I like it. Definitely not healthy, but I like it. All right, we've got to get off to our first place and explain a little of the history. So let me do that and I'll eat this and we'll head on. Oi, Keng Reng. <laughs> Kang Long. So now we have to wait to get transported over to where the old Tonbury Kingdom was. <laughs> Doesn't look much like a kingdom anymore. So my, so my God, Mirama, Taksin, Maharaj, am I? Here we go. We're now about to make our journey across the Chow Priya River, the great river that would connect Bangkok to many different countries from Europe, Asia, and all over the world, and would first bring our Chinese migrants here. Now, our journey is albeit a lot shorter. It's just over there. <laughs> but many of the migrants may have arrived here in ports similar to these. Now, obviously, they've been built up a lot more since those days, but that's besides the point. They came here. That's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> here we are. We've come across. Who do I pay? I haven't paid anyone yet. I feel like I've stolen something. Oh wow, and look just across here as we're heading to the old palace of uh, Daxin, there's a Chinese temple. Now this is actually the area where the Chinese migrants would have first migrated and he would have given them land around these areas but then moved them across the river to Yawarat but we'll explain that in a bit but yeah check it out. This is probably one of the temples that may have started all those years ago. And um, I have to take off my shoes to go in, so I'm not going to go in, but we'll have a look. Hello, 
ไม่มาเลยโอ้โนโนโอ้ล่ะชั่วชั่วชั่วกันล็อกกันฮอตขอบคุณครับขอบคุณมากครับโอเคอันนี้กันน้ําอันนี้กันน้ําอันนี้ก
Wow, this is way cooler than I imagined. Oh my god, this is an old Chinese um, mansion. They've uh, they've rebuilt it or something as like a kind of tourist attraction, but it doesn't seem open. It seems closed. Everything's very quiet. Anyway, we've got some things to explain here. Check it out! Wow! <laughs> it's stuff like this that you travel for. So cool. Just those some 200, 300, 400 years ago, many Chinese would have made their first journey from the southern ports of China, Xiamen, 4,000 kilometers all the way through the South China Sea to ports like these. And I think, you know, some of the history still remains here. The boats, the things used to hoist the boats. I don't know exactly what they're called. They may not have been as built up back in the past, but yeah, many of those Chinese people would have come with no one. They would have set off on their journey completely alone with no family, coming to Siam in search of riches and jobs to send back to their family to support them. Many Chinese peasants would have arrived here and got jobs as manual labourers and things like that. And due to the lack of citizenship and rights and things like that, they would start their own groups to provide protection, legal protection, loans for money, medical protection. And what would these groups be called? Well, my friend, they were our famous Angyi we've been talking about. Now, later on, they turn into these sort of gangs and different versions of um, Chinese, different races of Chinese would actually fight each other and band together in different Angi groups and cause loads and loads of riots and it's at opium dens, gambling dens, brothels, all this type of stuff which would give the Chinese a, a very bad name in Siam. But despite this, in 1899 they still prospered and they owned 18 out of 23 of the rice mills here in Siam with one of the most popular brands of rice actually being owned by a parent company who is Chinese. He arrived here in 1937 as a, as a refugee, I, I believe. So how did they do this? Well, many of the businessmen who came over would be some of the reasons they did, the successful people who created a lot of stuff. But there's one man that I want to explain who is very interesting and is kind of revered as the god of gambling here, like the god of luck. luck. And he's called Yi Hong Ko Hong. Yi Ko Hong. So, we're going to explain him next, because he's very cool. Now many of the casinos and gambling dens and brothels would be owned by our man we spoke about earlier, Yi Ko Hong. It was reported that he'd actually earn, I think it's something ridiculous like a million USD per day equivalent now from all of his uh, doings in, in Yawarat Road. And um, he's an important man because de despite his dark past, he ended up doing a lot for Thailand and he's revered here and uh, we're going to go explain him in a moment but first I need to explain a riot that would cause his empire to come tumbling down after making millions it just all came to a close anyway let's head off to the Sampeng market where the first what? <laughs> okay fair enough place is so busy now. <laughs> now it's getting a bit of evening time. Anyway, here in Sampeng area in 1889, gunfire would rattle the streets. There would be riots between two different Angyi clans, one Teochu and one Hokkien, and they were fighting over something, I'm not sure. Anyway, no one could stop them, the police couldn't stop them, so they had to enlist the help of the Siamese army, who would use the old trams here to um, hello, how are you? No, no, thank you. <laughs> to uh, send 
battalions over to basically stop the fighting between the Angi clans. Now, after this, the Siamese government was basically pissed off, so they started implementing new laws and they outlawed the Angi completely. They made them completely illegal, which meant that they could no longer operate. So, all of the opium dens, the gambling operations, would last for another couple of years. But the prominent members would continue on, not doing maybe the opium and gambling stuff, but would do stuff more beneficial to Siam. Hold on, I have. Hold on, I have. มีมีมีคําถามได้ยินในประวัติศาสตร์แถวนี้มีรถรถรถรามรถรามสันเจ้านี้เหรอหมายถึงว่าเค้าเขียนกําแพงหรือไงอืมเขียนกําแพงไม
crazy. What water feet? Water? Ah, 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 okay. Oh, my God. Took one. ทางสีน้ำเงินเด้อสิงคโปร์เออทางสีน้ำเงินอ่าโอเคโอเคโอเคสวัสดีเข้าสายครับอันนี้อันนี้เออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเ
from Yawarat Road. We uh, finished the history tour with some new friends. Uh, new player, new player. Go go. <laughs> go go. And cat. And cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you soon. Well, that was a bit of a strange end to the video. The guy was definitely into me. It's a bit weird. Oh well, he showed me some porridge, took me some beer, that's alright. Now I'm off. Off to go dancing. So thanks for joining me on the video and I'll see you later.